What's the difference between dedicated two-ways and concentric drivers? This question comes from Michael in Sebastian, Florida. Hey, Paul, can you give us the pros and cons? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I've just put my hands on this power plant and realized the thing is completely on, and I, I could just... I could see it on YouTube now, you know, McGowan sticks his hand, gets a shit shocked out of him and knocks him across the room. Okay, I'm going to try not to do that. Mm, sorry. <clears throat> hey, Paul, can you give us the pros and cons of concentric drivers versus two-way drivers designed speakers? Which is better, in your opinion, in terms of imaging, dynamics, etc.? Thank you, Michael Thaler. Ah, all these, all these power plants are on burning. I don't know if you can see these. This is our, our burning. Ooh, those suckers are hot. Well, they're burning right in. Uh, let's talk about what what let's talk about what we're talking about. What is a concentric driver? So a concentric driver is uh, it's and, and these have been popular on and off for years and years and years. Picture a woofer of some size, and mounted in the middle, away from the woofer, is a tweeter, and it's right in the middle. And so, and there's a little structure that holds it. So you got the woofer behind and you've got a, a full legit tweeter in front and it's one unit. So like uh, at my house, I have the Kef LS 50s, the Terry's favorite little speaker and that uses a concentric driver. And I think, or full range? Gosh, now I'm gonna say it wrong. But anyway, I, that's what a concentric driver is. I think they do. Um, and the advantages of a concentric driver are that all the sound comes from something as close to a point source as you are likely to get, right? And we'll talk about that in a sec. That as opposed to a two-way, which is the same tweeter and woofer, but now instead of the tweeter being in front of the woofer, we pick it up and we put it on top, and that's more traditional. That's typically what you're, you're likely to have seen is a tweeter on top and a woofer on the bottom, right? So a two-way loudspeaker is typically that, and more modern ones might have the concentric driver. As in anything loudspeaker-wise, it's all a compromise. Loudspeakers are the most compromised things that we make. I, I, can, I can build, I don't want to stick my fingers in here, I can build a piece of electronics for you that would make NASA proud. It, I can have, you know, triple O one distortion, flat frequency response from here to the, you know, the ends of the universe, filled with dark matter, with everything that would make anybody just swoon over its perfection. When it comes to a speaker, oh my God, throw perfection out the window. You're lucky to get two or three dB, uh, and we're not talking 0 0.0001, you know, flat like you can on an amplifier or a power plant or whatever. No, we're talking about dBs off, phase angles going, you know, like this at the crossover point. I mean, speakers are a joke. So are microphones. Microphones are less of a joke, but speakers, serious joke. And we are designing our own loudspeakers. We've got a Sprout in the works, a really cool Sprout speaker, and we've got a whole line of loudspeakers that are going to really revolutionize the industry. Not because we figured out how to make it less of a compromise, but just saying, okay, they're compromised, and so what's the best compromise that we can provide our customers in the easiest way to set up in their homes and have sound that we would be proud to have in our homes because honestly one of the biggest problems in all the years that I have been doing this and I've been doing it for 45 going on 50 years what speakers do I recommend to people seriously when it's 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 a huge problem I'm not saying this to to get everybody excited about our speakers you know We'll work that out for ourselves. No, I'm saying that because at least once a day, someone says, I've got your electronics, or I don't, but I want this kind of sound, I want that kind of sound. What kind of speaker should I get? I don't know what to tell people. I mean, I generally move towards magna planers because they have a very even sound. Uh, most women uh, or significant others, but I, you know, and I'll pick on the women here, uh, not 
pick on them, but I mean, they, because they, they have the aesthetic values that I certainly don't, they don't like them in the homes. They don't look good. They're just these big, you know, room dividers. Um, and they like it looking more like furniture, and I don't blame them. I do too. Uh, but magnet planers don't have any, uh, they, they don't have any dynamics, and they have very little bass, and the top end isn't great, but they do sound musical. So then you got to augment them with a subwoofer, and then, you know, the significant other doesn't like the way they look, and they got to have them away from the wall because they're a dipole, on and on, right? So that works for some people. Uh, I, could, I could say Sonus Fobbers. Well, I did that for my son, and his wife, Lauren, loves them. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful wooden sculptures. They're not great high-end speakers, and they're not what I would call high performance. Great looking, just not great performers. Uh, if you want to go out and spend you know, $80,000, you can get yourself a pair of Wilsons that look like these giant, you know, out of uh, a transformer, you know, things. Terry looks at the Wilsons, even though she loves the way they sound, and we love Wilson. I, I, I'm not saying anything bad against him, but just from an aesthetic thing, they're a collection of boxes hanging up like this, and they're very expensive. So only so many people are going to put that in their home. On and on and on. I, I, my friend Sandy Gross, he, he, he runs Golden Ear. I do a lot of recommending people. You know, I only got a couple grand to spend. What am I going to do? Get the Golden Ears. Get the Kefs, like the big Kef blades. Those are cool. Uh, expensive, but cool. Anyway, speakers are so flawed that there really isn't anything great. And that's why we're going to jump into it so that we can say, yeah, you want a speaker? is isn't cheap, but with this, I can guarantee you it'll fit into your home and it is as musical as it's going to come. And which is one of the reasons why you know, I, I teamed up with Arnie Nudell of Infinity to do all that. We've gotten off course. Con concentric drivers versus the two. All right, given that everything is a compromise, one of the compromises that you have with a concentric speaker, uh, so the good points, start with the good. It's everything's coming from this one area. Tweeter and woofer coming from this one area instead of up here so that you don't get this, you know, because high frequencies are kind of directional. So you always have a problem uh, of, of combining the tweeter, physically separated tweeters and woofers. But if you put a tweeter in front of the woofer, you stand a couple of, there's a couple of issues. Uh, one, you've got the woofer pumping over here with air and it causes a type of Doppler, not the same as like a wizard cone or something where you've got a full range speaker where as, as it's moving in and out, it's also moving fast, right? And that's real Doppler. But if I've got a piston over here pushing air and then higher frequencies, some, th those two are going to interfere with each other. So that's a little bit out. Plus, it limits the kind of tweeter that you can put. Now, I'm a particular fan of ribbon tweeters, of AMT tweeters, the, the folded ribbons. But those have fairly large magnet structures on them, and they're really not applicable to a coaxial speaker. So the kind of tweeter I would want, you can't really build it into a coax. So, I don't know. For my money, I keep them separate, because I want to have the very best tweeter I can have and the very best woofer I can have, and I think coax speakers, while interesting, certainly have some benefits, I choose the old-fashioned kind for me. I think in the end we can do a better job with those, all things considered. And no, not the NPR program. All right. Hope that answers your question. Talk to you later. Bye.